A few weeks ago, my husband and I were sitting outside in the backyard looking up at the stars. And there was this one that was definitely the brightest star in the sky. It was just over, just above the western horizon, and we were watching it. And he said it was Venus. And I said, no, Venus was never that bright. It must be a satellite. Maybe it's a star. We didn't know, but we kept talking about it and talking about it and talking about it some more and sort of imagined ourselves up there. And just like that, there we were. <laughs> and it was weird. It wasn't like I could still see him and I could still hear him, but it was like he had created some electronic image of his body and I had too, and so we could communicate with each other. And we looked around ourselves, and this was a huge, gigantic vessel, like a, a ship up there in the dark night sky. And there was thousands of beings on it. I'll call them people just because it makes it easier. But these um, beings were smaller than us, and they had high-pitched voices, but other than that, they were pretty much similar to how we were. And they were, we couldn't understand what they said, but there's sort of a universal language of emotion, and I guess they were mostly bored, just <laughs> going around. <coughs> anyway, we felt pretty strong, and we felt like once we got out of fear of danger, that no, they couldn't see us, that we weren't in danger, we started exploring the ship. And we found a room where these people were sleeping, another room where they were eating, another room where they were marching in formation. And we explored the ship further, and we found a room where there was a great, gigantic projection on the wall. Wow, Earth was unmistakable. That's the outline of the American continents. Wow. And then we saw a projection of a missile firing from the ship onto the earth, hitting the mid-Atlantic coast. And they all applauded. They all like went into <coughs> enthusiasm, yes. And they did it again, and they did it again, and they zoomed in more closely and got more detail, and we could see that that's Washington, D.C. they're aiming at. What's going to happen? Oh, no. But we, we couldn't understand them, and so we didn't know when this was going to happen. And then they showed a projection of the sun and the Earth's rotation and how the sun would rise. And this was going to happen at the sunrise on the East Coast, which was just a few hours away. And we thought, how are we going to stop this? We've got to stop this. So my husband's pretty ingenious. His name's Rick. <laughs> and he, we devised a plan that they, we would find the rocket launchers and we would turn them 180 degrees. So they fired not on the America and Washington, D.C., but back on the ship itself. And this was hard to do, to generate this force, because we didn't have the strength of our bodies. How did you do this? And we found that working as a team, if I held a steady position and he could get leverage off of me, that we could turn them. So the first one took a while, like an hour, to figure out how to do it. And then we only had an hour left. So then the next one was faster, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. There were six of them all together, and we got them all turned. And by that time, it was 6.10. And the sunset, the sunrise in Washington, D.C. was going to happen at 6.18. So we had just made it, and we thought, oh, we better get off the ship now. And the instant we thought that, there we were, back in our backyard, sitting up, watching the dark sky, talking about what was going to happen. And just a few minutes later, boom, that star exploded into ten times its volume, ten times its brightness. And wow! So this was the middle of the night, and how many people had seen this? Wow, we didn't know. We checked the internet, and there was a couple stories. One person even did a video that they posted on YouTube. 
It only got a few hundred views. And one person actually wrote a scientific article attributing it to the emission of greenhouse gases. <laughs> <laughs> but we knew better. And we, have we told this story to anybody? Not, not until now. This is the first time. I mean, after all, who would believe us? Thank <laughs> you.